new Chicago police released video of the shooting of a Chicago firefighter's son. The 12-year-old boy was hit in the park on Ellis and 65th Friday night when a group of people walked up and started shooting. At least three men fired shots. That 12-year-old was hit in the leg is expected to be okay, but anyone with information about the shooting or the identities of the shooters are asked to call police. The Postmaster General has agreed to testify in front of lawmakers. President Donald Trump appointed Luis DeJoy to the position just a couple of months ago. Now, he would be the one instituting changes to the Postal Service. A live look out at Capitol Hill right now where he will be testifying. That's happening next week on Monday. House Democrats, in the meantime, will be voting on a bill that would stop those changes. And we are expecting that to happen happened this weekend. Several Illinois lawmakers will be out here at the post office headquarters in Chicago. Later this morning, they're accusing the president of trying to sabotage the Postal Service during an election year. All of this comes as mail sorting machines are being taken out of service. The president of the local chapter of the union that represents postal drivers and clerks at Chicago's main post office tells us the bosses have taken four mail, four mail sorting machines offline. A fifth is being removed at O'Hare Airport. Now, Democrats say it's part of the president's nationwide effort to slow down voting by mail. Again, those state representatives will be out here at 9.30 this morning for a press conference. Meanwhile, the Chicago Board of Elections is encouraging voters to fill out their mail-in ballots and then send them back as soon as possible. We're live in the South Loop. Mugul Deboy, CBS 2 News. The Chicago Fire Department suspends all training at its academy after nearly half of the 100 recruits test positive for COVID-19. The academy is now undergoing a deep cleaning. The recruits were less than three months into the six-month process. Chicago Fire says they will do remote learning for the next two weeks as they wait for those infected to recover. While safety is top priority, the fire union president says the academy cannot stay closed for long because they're still seeing close to 250 firefighters retire every year. At the end of the day, they're going to have to rehire people. It's just going to cost the taxpayers more money by not getting these classes through. And unfortunately, this is the first time out of the last four classes that this has happened. The city says it has no plan to stop all training at the fire academy and will resume when it's safe to do so. None of the recruits who tested positive for coronavirus was hospitalized. Will Chicago continue to loosen its travel restrictions or go back to tightening the reins? The newest update from the Chicago Department of Public Health is coming out a little bit later today at noon. Now, these are the coronavirus hotspots still on the city's emergency travel order, which says anyone going to one of them has to quarantine for two weeks when they get back. It might seem like a lot, but you may remember Iowa, Kansas, and Utah were taken off the list last week. Chicago's map is a bit different from this one, now being offered by the Illinois Department of Public Health. The governor's office says that unlike Chicago, they are not requiring anyone to quarantine based on where they travel from. They clarify their online map is simply a guide for travelers from Illinois to show them which other states are struggling with COVID-19. They'd hope it'll make them an informed decision about where they go and how they protect themselves and their family when they get there. Most districts are opting for virtual learning or hybrid models, but the Chicago Archdiocese moved ahead with in-class instruction. Some buildings opening yesterday. Face coverings are required, as well as temperature checks at the door. Classrooms that had communal round tables now have small forward-facing desks marked and separated by six feet. Kids will stay in their individual classrooms as much as possible, including lunch. That way, if a student does get COVID, he just has to, just the class has to quarantine. Most of the 199 schools in the Archdiocese will open this week and next. Only on to a deeper look into the bombshell report sharply criticizing state's attorney Kim Fox's handling of the Jesse Smollett case. It states in the interest of justice, Residents deserve to see special prosecutor Dan Webb's full report into Fox's handling slash mishandling of the case and soon, not just the snapshot released yesterday. Smollett was accused of faking his own racist and homophobic attack in Chicago back in January 2019. The charges were dropped by Fox. In a 60-page report, special prosecutor Dan Webb said there were several failures from Fox, like recusing herself and appointing her number two to take the high-profile case. The report the court also claimed she made false statements to the media, but Webb determined the state's attorney wasn't swayed by any outside influences.
In a statement, Fox says she rejects how the report characterized the prosecution and that she didn't make any false statements. In February, Webb charged Millette with six new crimes. Right now, the National Weather Service is warning everyone expect dangerous swimming conditions all day today right along Lake Michigan. You are taking a live look out at the lake and you can see why the Weather Service is telling everyone to stay out of the water. Those very serious, dangerous waves out there. Right now, there's an online effort to save a Bronzeville hospital from closing its doors. This is a petition on change.org to save Mercy Hospital and Medical Center, which was started on Sunday. As you can see, it already has more than 2,100 signatures. The teaching hospital has been part of Chicago since the 1850s and recently announced it would close sometime next year. If it does, the next closest hospital in any direction would be roughly three miles away, potentially leaving more than a million people in a healthcare desert. I'm Lauren Victory and I stopped by VIP Towing to ask about this semi truck that won't be released unless the owner coughs up nearly $20,000. Towing is expensive, it's not cheap. Why do people think that towing is cheap? It's not. We're being held hostage. Joe Smelko refuses to pay that amount. The irony, this is Roadstar Trucking's second $18,000 Chicago towing bill. The first came from Citywide Recovery after a November 2019 incident that looked worse than it was, according to Smelko. In both these cases, neither one of these tow companies were called by us. Roadstar is now trying to deter what attorneys call future wrongdoing. In a complaint filed against VIP towing, lawyers included a section for punitive damages that could end up costing the lot thousands of dollars. I'm Lauren Victory, CBS2 News. Today at noon, St. Sabina Church is giving out 5,000 masks to help communities stay safe during the pandemic. They'll be passing them out from the corner of 79th and Racine. Father Michael Flager says the African-American community has been one of the hardest hit, so it's important to protect yourself and others. Leo Friedman is the CEO of iPromo. They used to sell corporate gifts and promotional products, but they pivoted back in the spring to sell masks and sanitizer, the same kind of stuff he's now seeing on the street. Unless there's something done about it, whether it's legislatively or as a community, we're going to continue to see this, you know, propagate all around the city. Now you could use this form on iPromo's website to submit pictures of PPE litter you cleaned up. For every five items you submit, iPromo will donate a mask to a charity in need. A professor with Louisiana State University is tracking PPE litter across the world. Back in April, Chicago residents sent him what they saw on a few blocks near Pulaski and Diversity. So how does Chicago compare to other cities? A little worse than some and, and not as bad as others. The worst place that we've seen in the country has been in uh, Brooklyn in New York City. Bensfield says you should keep a plastic bag with you so you can keep your disposable masks or wipes in there until you find a garbage can. Tim McNicholas, CBS 2 News. The lake is looking a little rough this morning, but later this fall, it'll be playtime in Lake County. It's a live look along the lakefront this morning. You see those waves whipping up. Up at Fort Sheridan, Forest Preserve in Lake Forest, fish and other creatures will benefit from a new underwater playground. Between now and October, man-made underwater reefs will be created along a mile and a half of the lake shore. Materials will include limestone slabs, tree trunks with branches and roots attached, cobblestones and sand. The reefs will also stabilize the shoreline and help prevent erosion. The project is a joint effort of Lake County Forest Preserves and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Temperatures today are going to be a little bit on the cooler side, cooler than average. The average high is 82. We'll do mid to upper 70s. A little breezy as well. That's why those lake waves are going to be continuing to build. Four to six foot waves are expected. 78 for the high today and each and every day it gets a little bit warmer as we get closer and closer to the weekend. We do have a chance for some showers. They just hold off until sometime late Saturday afternoon or evening.